Sin, and welcome back to Sin TV. I'm your anchor, Simone Smith. And I'm Kamea Spearman. Let's get right into Sin TV, guys. Isn't it great that we're finally back at the anchor desk? Of course, we took a long break. Everybody tries to take our places, but we're back. The originals, of course. <laughs> Wednesday, Mayor, May 10th, Mary Rahm Emanuel came in and talked to the seniors about their steps after high school. We now turn to Marianne Abdi with the video. All right, good luck in your studies. Hey, show me the report card at the end of the year. Okay. All right. I can speak for everyone when I say it was such an amazing experience to get to see and meet the mayor. Of course, he's such a humble man. Yeah. Well, Mary has been a pretty busy girl. She also covered the International Fest. Let's turn now to her for the scoop. You might be wondering what the event was sent to meet where cultural clothing and carry their flags was. Well, Sen had its 45th International Fest, August 27, 2017. Sen is a small Eastern Caribbean island that is built with hills, mountains, and lovely waterfalls. performed varieties of dances for the Edgewater community and family and friends. For many years now, Sen had, has had this tradition, where students performed an in-school and an after-school performance on the same day. But this year, it was different. Students performed only after school, which confused many people. But we're having an end of the school year performance.
Last Thursday, May 18th, the SINS Music Department presented its band, choir, and orchestra with a jazz ensemble and a collab with the Lakeside Singers. Let's turn now to the highlights. You guys do a lot better than that. How are we doing tonight? Yeah. Who's ready to hear some awesome music? to the godly no that can't be right Adnan did you change the script wow anyway Adnan Hazalik giving us the latest updates on the recent death of American television executive Roger Ailes thank you Simone and Kamea now the topic of death is a touchy subject of course we offer our condolences to the families of anybody who's passed away but there comes a time when the deceased was such a monumental jerk that there are just some things that have to be said. This is the case with Roger Ailes. If a hemorrhoid grew sentience and grew eyes. The former Fox News chairman and CEO died May 18th due to a subdural hepatoma, which comes as a real surprise because this looks like the healthiest man on the planet, does it not? Many prominent conservatives paid respect to Ailes, who advised a number of Republican presidential candidates before helping launch Fox News. Former President George H.W. Bush even tweeted out that, quote, while Ailes wasn't perfect, he was his friend. The same way Simone isn't completely snooty, or the way LaCroix doesn't exactly taste like cat urine. Pretty close, though, don't you think? Now, Ailes' death has sparked back years of controversy about his many accusations of sexual harassment. 
the most recent of which was just last year when Gretchen Carlson filed a lawsuit against him, Carlson who herself was a prominent former Fox News host. She had stated that Ailes had harassed her throughout her time at Fox News and created an enabled a hostile work environment, apparently even more hostile than when Miss Weiss and Mr. Ewing fight over the last sugar cookie in the teacher's lounge. Oh, they gonna go at it. Someone's gonna catch that fade, believe me. But it wasn't just Gretchen Carlson who filed these complaints. According to a Huffington Post article, multiple women have accused Ailes of sexually related misconduct, from unwanted groping to, quote, sec psychological torture. But the wave of allegations has only gotten worse, as reports stated that Ailes may have also used company money to reach settlements with accusers and to, quote, run a black room spying operation against his personal adversaries. Others accusing Ailes include Megan, Ke Megan Kelly, Laura Lunn, and many others, including Shelley Ross, who wrote an essay that Roger Ailes was very persistent as he continued to explain how much he believed in loyalty and how much he believed that the best expression of loyalty was in the form of, quote, sexual alliance. What? The only alliance that Roger Ailes knows about is the one between his two knees, working together for 77 long years to hold up an entire house. Hashtag Roger Big Body. But... As awful as Roger Ailes is, he's only the tip of the iceberg as far as what's wrong with Fox News. From their heavily right-wing hardline Republican messaging, to their consistently inaccurate information, to whatever the hell is wrong with Greg Gutfeld. He's what happens when a bro learns to read for the first time and wants to brag. Fox News has consistently had a history of sexism. Not just because of what they say about women or their stances on women's issues, which is sadly to be expected, but also their policy on the women at their work. Several former Fox News employees have stated that female hosts are pushed to wear short skirts and high heels, all because Roger Ailes believes that it's more pleasing to the eye, a man with as much sex appeal as a baboon colonoscopy. But, thankfully, as time passes, more and more insight is being found out about the inner workings at Fox News, and with that comes more exposure on their horrible boys club environment. But, with death comes life, and we here at Send TV put together a best of compilation of Fox News throughout the years. So, let's take a look at what Roger Ailes probably literally gave birth to. Didn't we? Didn't men give you the kitchen? There's got to be some downside to having a woman president, right? Something. Well, then I guess if you're in a bar and she slaps you, you punch her in the face. A, a hoe is a hoe, right? The, the great Dr. McCotty. Why not reward her for a nice body? Are movies like the Disney smash hit about an ice queen and her sister empowering girls by turning our men into fools and villains? So I think men should be able to veto women's abortions. Know your role and shut your mouth. My role as yeah. a woman. Yeah. Headline time. Women are everywhere. We're letting them play golf. Golf and tennis now, it's out of control. You know what? You know, <laughs> wolfing down chili dogs with the uh, dietary dominatrix, uh, Michelle Obama. When you interview her, will she be sitting on your lap? <laughs> <laughs> I can, one can only hope. <laughs> you were you were actually sweating. Yeah, well, it's, it was hot as hell out. Can we get Very video hard. of that for next week? She is finding fault with men on the street saying hello to her, which may in fact be their only way of contacting women. It's their bar, and she's walking through it. Inez, to to be taken seriously, <laughs> you can't wear skin tight jeans. You're right, and she's a slut. What is your favorite thing to see, like your man in? <laughs> of course, a peach rump him. I, what is that? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> You'll see. Um, let's head over to Reagan Ivy. She's gonna tell us about the new trend or fashion suicide. Good morning, son. With warm weather quickly approaching, many of us find our wardrobe changing, and well, for that matter, lessening. I'm sure many of us have heard of the new trend called romp -hymns, and 
big debate all over Twitter and Facebook, so I took it upon myself to go through the Sen hallways and ask some students on their thoughts on who started this trend and what their thoughts are on it. Did you ever wear it? Wow. <laughs> uh, mm. No. No. I'm no. sorry. No. Never. Dots do it for me. Polka dots? The polka so dots. Like You're in favor of them? No. Um, no. No. No, no, no. Although he has the legs for it. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't. No. It's not, it's kind of not my style. Okay, thank you. This is not a thing that I should be wearing or any person should be wearing. We are so excited to be able to show you guys the second episode of the studio. Are you serious? <laughs> Directed by Edgar Molasses Flores. We're just really happy to show you guys what actually happens behind the scenes of Sin TV because it gets pretty crazy. Yeah, make sure you watch it. <laughs> This week at SEN, we interview recent graduate Michael about his culinary arts career. The SEN Choir. What the hell is going on in here? Oh. And then why are you in my feet? And why are you letting somebody else anchor with you? I thought it was you. You thought it was. You see the thing? You, you know my feet move. Bye. Okay. Hey, SEN TV. So I'm Kamea, and of course I'm the star of Sin TV. I was gone for maybe a day, a couple of, maybe a weeks, but like, who really cares? But while I was gone, some snake at- Oh, uh, Kamea? Yeah? Uh, that's my desk. You know you see, this is, I'm the star. Anyway, Adnan, he thought he could take my seat, I mean my place, and then Simone, Man. she, Mr. C, wait, it's someone. I'm, it's my desk, it's okay, you know, I'm the star. That's my lungs. Oh, right. No. All right. Anyway, and then like some snake really thought that he could take me, and I was just like, "You can't kick me out of Cincy. What are you doing? I'm saying something." What? Did you hear back from the dorms? I didn't. I hope we get to like live by each other. Because I sent you the information on the halls that I wanted. You did. We have no. I haven't seen her for like the past fifteen minutes, so. What is going on in here? Nothing. What are you guys talking about? Studio. Studio stuff. Studio stuff. It looks like you're trying to take my best friend away from me. What? No. Oh. 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 Sorry guys, I was watching my favorite scene in Jaws. Hello, I'm Marianne. I don't know why they're making a big deal out of it. I need to go back and do my career manager stuff. I don't know why you bothered me. This is the last episode of me and my Bestie anchoring for Sin TV. Well, that's all we have for today, guys. Toots Magoots. Good job, guys. Last episode of Sin TV. Yeah. yeah. I'm awesome. Nice job. We're all done. Anyway, how did I do, Marianne? You did very great. What a feeling. It was good being someone, right? Yes. Hey, Ray, you hear me? Hey, Ray, you hear me? Hey. What you doing? Hey, Ray, you hear me? 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 How was the episode? It's fun, I guess. How was filming with Kamea? Was an admin. Shut up, Jaws is awesome. Um, Simone. Yeah. I didn't know gorillas made music. I don't think they can. Mm -hmm. Um, let's head over to Adnan with his gorillas album review, <laughs> whatever that is. Tell us the story. How did you convince 2D to be part of the band? I ran him over in a car. Oh, 
Yeah, that is true. It might not sound like a nice thing to do, but it works. That's interesting. Maybe I should try this in my work environment. No! Hands, no! The long-awaited return of the virtual British band Gorillaz finally arrived and fans are abuzz. The man behind the music, Damon Albarn, is back with his fifth studio album that dropped April 28th. With recording sessions in London, New York, Chicago, Paris, and Jamaica, Humans is the first studio album since 2012's The Fall and features guest spots from several artists including Vince Staples, De La Soul, Danny Brown, and Pusha T. The album itself has a very party sound to it, both dark and playful at the same time. Unlike previous Gorilla projects, such as Plastic Beach, Humans focuses more on the individual tracks on the album as opposed to the overarching concept. But while it doesn't do this, it still has a very distinctive theme being sent out. That theme being the world's reaction to a surprising, world-changing event. Gee, I wonder what that might be. While not being overly political, with the Commander-in-Chief not even being mentioned at all, his influence on the album is still very much present. Tracks like We Got The Power provides a message of waiting through dark and difficult times and closes off the album triumphantly. But the album is not without its own flaws, especially with some fans. While the guest features are very good and add a lot to the project, there's just so many of them. Albarn's lack of presence is very noticeable and that had some fans up in arms. It's almost as if 2D, Murdoch, Russell, and Noodle, the four cartoon members of the band, are not front and center on this go around. But overall, that doesn't take away from the quality found in this album. Some real big standouts are Ascension, Charger, Strobe Light, Let Me Out, and Out of Body. In the end, I'd give the album a very solid 8 out of 10. Damon Albarn and the Gorillas are back, and I can't wait to see what he's coming up with next. For over two months, Simone and Anna and I have been working on a WTTW contest project, and last week we found out that we won the top prize of $4,000. Um, we would love to thank everyone who made this video possible, starting off with the Inspiration Cafe community. To be able to work with you guys and to show off all the hard work that you do is truly one of the highlights of my high school experience. Yeah, I'm so thankful for winning this scholarship. Big shout out to WTTW for giving us this opportunity to show off our neighborhoods. Now let's watch the award winning video. When you're homeless or about to become homeless, you kind of, there's a feeling ho of uh, hopelessness. And coming here, because of the, the positive energy they give you, they, you, get, you, you feel more dignified because you're, you're getting meals in a, in a very pleasant atmosphere. Uh, you, 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 feel, you feel more like you're part of the, the society that way. So a lot of people have heard the story of where our organization came from. Um, we were founded by one Chicago police officer named Lisa Nigro who um, just started pulling a red wagon full of coffee and sandwiches around this neighborhood in uptown and just talking to people that she encountered out on the street. She just knew that she wanted to, to find some way of bridging that divide that exists between people who are very poor and who are at the margins of society. Um, and then the rest of the folks who live in the city, that we don't often communicate with each other, that we don't often uh, hear about each other's struggles. And she used food as a vehicle to create like a safe environment where people could sit down and um, feel comfortable and share something together. And it was really just that and listening and trying to understand how she could help people. Inspiration Corporation is really tied up in the people that I've met while I've been here and that to me is the most special part about working here that you actually get to interact with the, the folks that you're serving and, and you know learn about these people and your life becomes enriched by learning more about their stories and you know all the different um, diversities of struggles that they've gone through. It's a place that people get to come together who might not otherwise spend time with one another. I mean, it's kind of a cliche, but it's almost like cheers, you know? Somebody walks in and you're like, hey, how's it going? And, and you remember stuff about people. You remember what job training they're going through. You remember um, some event that they were going to be attending and you ask about it. And that starts all kinds of good conversations. And it works both ways. So I was looking for a, a job because I had uh, been unemployed for 
about six months and I was running out of money so I had to I had to get uh, some help and because inspiration helps people pre are preventative in terms of uh, keeping people from becoming homeless they were able to help me and I joined their job training program right away and I was able to get a job from through that trip job training program Personally, I love this place. They help people come become more self-sufficient in their endeavors in life and everything, you know. They're, they're awesome. At the time, I was homeless, and um, I was out south, and they had the living room cafe out south, and then I got one of their brochures, and I just took it from there. Yeah. Went to the culinary classes and ended up getting hired here. There's a couple more people that was in the same um, shoes that I was in, you know, homeless. I was around at, um, the shelter and the cornerstone, which is right around the corner from here. And then it's like God, it just everything just took a change for the better for my life, you know, once I started working here. It's kind of hard to come out the front door and I see guys selling stuff. And, you know, at one point in time, I was me, mine. A 30 year of drug addiction, you know, homelessness, in and out of penitentiary. Uh, stuff like that. So uh, to turn it around, to be around it all the time, I'm still like outside. I'm not using it anymore, but I still see everybody that, that are. I've been a part of the inspiration since 1990. So I've been a part of it for 20 some years, really? uh, years. Uh, well, we try to support them from whatever their journeys are. They come in, they say they need help. Buying a chef jacket, we try to assist them with that. Uh, we try to assist them with employment. We try to assist them with writing resumes. We try to assist them with anything they need. If anyone wants to be involved in the work that we're doing here and support, we rely on more than a thousand volunteers every year to run the Inspiration Cafe. And if anyone's interested in volunteering and helping out, they can go to inspirationcorp.org and find the volunteer section um, and just come out for an orientation with us and get signed up and we'd love to bring them in. We turn now to Philip Johnson White and his sports update. Hello, son. This is Philip Johnson White, and this is your daily sports report. It's the return of our summer slash fall sports as we end the calendar year. The boys' soccer and football teams are ready to kick into full gear as to prepare for the new season. The girls' soccer team finished their season six and two this year, so please give them congratulations for a great season. The girls' softball team lost their final game against Francis W. Parker 14-5, unfortunately, but their overall season record was 6-5-1. Let's hope for a better season next year, Bulldogs. Sens' baseball team unfortunately lost their playoff game against Northside as they blew us out 10-0, finishing their season at 7-15. Anyways, however, there is a great positive to our team as senior Albert Warner won an award for player of the game for his actions against Foreman as they blew them out. Nate Richardson and Albert Warner are both leaders on the team as they both had 19 and 18 hits respectively. And for you, Albert, thanks for being such a great player for this team and good luck to you in college. Now, as always, this has been me, the boy with the nappy hair, Philip Johnson White, <laughs> and I will see you guys next time or next year whenever you see my face again. Well, that's it for us, signing off. I'm your anchor, Simone Smith. And I'm Kamea Spearman. Toots, Toots Magoots. Magoots.